Okay, guys, you're welcome back to our class. <clears throat> In this class, we are going to be determining the relative density of a liquid using a U-tube, as you are seeing now. The liquid under consideration here is a pure granule oil. So this is the granule oil which we want to determine the relative density. And we are going to be comparing it with water. This is just water. So how do we intend to achieve that? We are going to be letting the water in from one arm and then the granule oil from this other arm. Whenever we notice a height difference, we measure the height difference for both liquids. And then we repeat the experiment for five other readings so that it will give us an accurate result. And then we plot a graph of the height of the liquid against the height of water. Anything we get will give us the relative density for that particular liquid so i like that to follow through so that we achieve our results together so to start with i'm going to be letting water in from one arm of the youtube as you are seeing here so i'm pouring water into the youtube just to about one third or thereabouts so having done that i'm going to also from the other arm letting the oil into the youtube carefully and then Will commence so here is it the the oil i'm letting the oil in remember or recall that granite oil and water are immixable so it's going to flow you notice that both levels are rising both the water so we pay attention anytime there is a change in level if you look properly, you're going to notice a slight change in level here. The oil is higher in the tube than the water. So I'm going to first note the common points on the YouTube. We can note here, you can see the granite oil there. So I'm going to simply use a marker to mark this point and trace it to this point also to mark so that I can find the difference from that point to the water and also the change in both of them so this is what i have here i will use this marker to just note the the point here and then i'm, I'm going to trace it using a, a meter rule to find out the corresponding point on this side and still note it so here is it you can see the two points one on the other side and one the, on the other side so now that we have marked these points, we are going to now find the height difference for both of them. Starting with that of water, this is my simple meter rule. I'm going to measure the height difference, height of water in the tube. So here, if you look at it here, the height of water in the tube is about 8.5. Here is it here, 8.5, avoiding parallax error. The height of the water is 8.5, as you can see here. I'm also going to do that for the liquid to find the height of the liquid. From our observation, we know that the height of the liquid will be higher than the height of the water. All right, so let's measure it through. So this is what we have here. Measuring the height of the liquid. I have my height here to be equal to 9.4, or rather 9.5, as you can see here. Here's the height of the liquid at 9.5 so here you can see the down part of it right and then you can see the up part of it 9.5 so I'm going to record this height and then in order to get accurate results I'm not going to be dependent on this reading alone I'm also going to add a small quantity of water and oil and take another reading until I get about five readings that will help me get accurate results so let's repeat this experiment for other readings so let us pour in more liquid to see what will happen to find out the change in height for the second reading so uh, here you can see i'm adding here you can see that the height is now very more conspicuous right now notice that the the common points has changed so i erase the first one i will note the second common point if i trace it as well this is what I'm going to get. So I'm going to measure the 
height of both liquids on both arms. So to measure the height of water, this is what I have. The height of water is exactly at 10. Here, height of water is just about 10, as you can see here. And then the height of the liquid, as you're seeing here, is just about 11. So you can see, just about 11. Am I correct? Avoiding parallax error. This is 11.2, sorry. I'm trying to get the exact reading, sorry. 11.2. I'm trying to avoid parallax error. Eleven point two. So I'm going to still proceed by adding a little bit more oil for my third readings. I'll see how much readings that can be accumulated accommodated by this YouTube. So I add a little bit of it. You can see here. So if you notice, there's also a change here in the the, the common points. So I'm going to erase this and remark it again. Okay, so here are we now for the third reading. To get the height of water, this is what I have here. 10, 10.4, I believe, yes, 10.4, avoiding parallax error. The height of the water here is about 10.4. Is it clear enough? Yes. Yeah, 10.4, as you can see, right? While the height of the liquid is just about 11.5, as we are seeing here. Okay, see here, 11.5, 11.5. So I'm going to record that and continue. For the fourth reading, I'm going to add a little bit of more oil to, to see... So I have here, I have here some oil more pouring. Notice also that the lower point, the common point has changed. So I'm going to erase the both and remark it again for my reading. So here is it. You can see that I've successfully marked the common points. So my measurement is going to be from this point to measure the height of water. And by measurement, my height of water is exactly at 11, as I have it here, avoiding parallax error. My height of water is at 11. So here is it here, point 11. While that of the liquid here is at point 12. At point 12. The best way to do this is to use a calibrated YouTube. You won't have to struggle reading it the way I am. Here is a point 12 for the liquid. So this is my fourth reading. All right, let me see whether I can get some more space for a little bit of a liquid here. So I have here before the overflow. So I can get I can get what I have here. I'm getting some. I'm getting this should be my last reading. So, all right, I've gotten. So, I'm going to also see if you notice at this point, you notice that the level is also further down. I'm going to change this in order to get the accurate level. So, let me remark it again. All right, so having done that, finally, what will be my height of water here yeah. my height of water is at point 11.9 my height of water is at point 11.9 as you are seeing here right so that is what i have and that of the liquid my height of liquid is at point 13 exactly it's at point 13 exactly so i'm going to record all of this, this is my last reading i'm going to record all of this and then plot my graph and show you what it looks like so here is how the table looks like if you look at this table you would see the compilation of the height of the water which we measured in cm on the table 
and to the right also you would see the compilation of the height of the liquid used which is the granule oil also recorded in CM. With this table we are simply going to be plotting a graph of the height of the water on the vertical axis against the height of the liquid on the horizontal axis. But before that what was the precaution that we took in getting to this point where we got in this experiment? So in this experiment, we took certain precautions. Number one, I mentioned that during the con conduct of the experiment is that you must have to avoid parallax error. Parallax error in reading the YouTube. I told you that the best YouTube that you would want to use, especially is the ones that are ones that are calibrated or you mount your meter root to be steady across. Right. So avoid parallax error in reading the YouTube. Apart from um, the parallax error as well, you would have to also make sure that the YouTube was horizontal. The YouTube has to be horizontal during the conduct of the experiment. It has to be horizontal. If it is tilted, then it means that it would give you a wrong result for either of the liquids in, on that consideration. And then you must have to ensure to drop the liquid gently into the tube. Don't just pour it as if um, erratically. All right, drop it gently into the liquid. These are simple precautions that you would have to take in conducting this experiment. So what does our graph look like? Now, if you look at the graph sheet, you will see. So a look at the graph will tell you that this graph is a straight line graph that should pass through the origin, although mine is slightly away from the origin, as you can see. On the vertical axis here, you can see the height of water in CM. On the horizontal axis here, you can see the height of the liquid in CM. And all the points are all represented on the graph sheet. So you can see a straight line graph that is expected to pass through the origin. With this graph, we can also deduce our slope. What would our slope be like? To calculate the slope, we simply find the change in the height of water to the change the ratio of the change of the height of water to the change in the height of the liquid from what i plotted that will give me 0 0.94 and you know that the relative density of the oil by calculation is meant to be gotten by using the formula height of water column all over height of liquid column so it means that this value which i have gotten 0 0.94 is the relative density of that oil so what are we to do we can compare right if we compare this value that i've gotten with the standard volume of vegetable oils you see that the standard value is about 0 0.912 to about 0 0.920 but mine is 0 0.94 telling you that is a little bit um um outside of range for the standard value but just about close which can be um attributed to so many other factors maybe experimental errors and all of those so you can see that the experiment was quite fair because the figures are just close so we can conclude that the relative density of the liquid which we use in this case of vegetable oil in the experiment is 0 0.94 some important facts also i'd like you to know which i didn't really explain better in the during the conduct of the experiment was that the reason why we had to measure the common points is because the pressure at the same horizontal surface or level is the same. So we assume that the, for those common points that the pressure for both the liquid and the water will be the same at that level, that horizontal. This is a property of pressure all right, in liquid. So pressure at the same horizontal level in a liquid is the same. So that was why we had to measure those common points in order to get the pressure at both points. So because we know that this is the same, we can now assume that pressure is equal to the height times the density and times the acceleration due to gravity for both the water and the liquid is the same. So by cross multiplying and cancelling out, we get that the pressure or the density of the liquid over the density of the water is equal to the height of water over height of liquid. And that, that will give us the density of the liquid over the density of water will give us the relative density of that particular liquid, which is the oil. So that was how we made our deductions to get the density of the liquid in question, which is the vegetable oil, to be equal to the height of water 
all over the height of the liquid and by by our graph we got that and then we 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 substituted and got our value to be 0 0.94 i believe that the experiment was clear for you and it helped you to understand the concept under consideration so i would encourage you to go over it again share with your friends like and support us by liking and, and subscribing to our channel the cool is educational media until next time we appreciate your stay thank you very much god bless you